Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on classification of antiarrhythmic drugs. Wongan Williams classification. Class 1 drugs are sodium channel blockers. They are divided into class 1A, 1B, and 1C. Class 1A antiarrhythmics, they work by moderate sodium channel blockade. This reduces conduction velocity and prolongs repolarization. Examples include quinidine, disopyramide, procainamide, and archmaline. Cardiac effects include moderate reduction in Vmax, variable effects on action potential duration, increased refractory period, and widened QRS. Examples of indications for prevention of SVT, VT, and atrial tachycardia, and treatment of WPW syndrome. Class 1B antiarrhythmics work by mild sodium channel blockade. This reduces conduction velocity and shortens repolarization. Examples include lidocaine, maxillotine, and phenytoin. Cardiac effects. Mild decreases in Vmax, reduction in action potential duration, reduction in refractory period. QRS is unchanged. Examples of indications of class 1B drugs. Prevention and treatment of certain arrhythmias particularly associated with ischemia, such as premature ventricular contractions, ventricular tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. Class 1C drugs work by marked sodium channel blockade. This reduces conduction velocity. There is no change in repolarization. Examples include flaconite and propafenon. Cardiac effects. There is marked reduction in Vmax. Variable effects on action potential duration and refractory period. QRS is widened. Examples of indications include treatment and prevention of SVT, junctional tachycardias, and ventricular tachyarrhythmias with or without an accessory pathway. Class 2 drugs are beta-adrenergic receptor blockers. They reduce automaticity in SA and AV nodes. Examples of indications include prevention of sympathetic-induced tachyarrhythmias, rate control in AF, prevention of AV nodal re-entrant tachycardia, and secondary prevention after myocardial infarction. Class 3 drugs are potassium channel blockers. They inhibit the inward potassium current. Examples include amiodarone, brethilium, sotalol, dronadarone, dofertilite, and ibutilite. Many class 3 drugs are now known to have more than one action apart from potassium channel blockade. Cardiac effects include marked prolonged repolarization, increase in action potential duration, increased refractory period, QRS is unchanged. Class 3 drugs may prolong the QT interval and precipitate torsade depoints. Examples of indications include prevention or treatment of SVT, VT, or VF, including those associated with accessory conduction pathways. Class 4 drugs are calcium channel blockers. Examples include verapamil, and dutiazem. Cardiac effects include reduced depolarization and Vmax of slow response cells in SA and AV nodes, reduction in action potential duration, reduced refractory period of AV node, and slowing of conduction through SA and AV nodes. Examples of indications include rate control in AF and prevention of AV node re-entrant tachycardias. Class 4 drugs are ineffective in treating ventricular tachycardias. Class 5 or others. This includes drugs that do not fit readily into the other four classes. Digoxin. Digoxin works by inhibition of sodium potassium ATPase pump. This increases intracellular sodium concentration and reduces the concentration gradient across the membrane. Increased intracellular sodium concentration reduces the driving force for sodium calcium exchanger. This results in reduced extrusion of calcium into the extracellular space and increase in intracellular calcium concentrations. Digoxin also has vagal and sympathetic effects and reduces intracellular potassium. Effects on the heart There is increased myocardial contractility due to increased intracellular calcium and also reduced neuronal reuptake and increased central sympathetic drive, producing increased local catecholamine concentrations. Effects on the cardiac conduction system. In the atria, 
there is reduced rate of phase 4 depolarization in the SA node and automaticity, increased refractory period duration of AV node and bundle of his, resulting in reduced AV node conduction and reduced bundle of his conduction, and increased action potential duration. In the ventricles, there is increased spontaneous depolarization rate, reduced refractory period duration, and increased ventricular excitability is more marked in the presence of hypokalemia, producing ectopic pacemaker foci. There is increased risk of arrhythmias due to increased excitability. The classic digoxin effect on ECG is prolonged PR interval, shortened QT interval, downsloping reverse thick ST segment depression, which may be wrongly interpreted as ischemia, and T-wave inversion. Effects of digoxin on the autonomic nervous system Direct and indirect vagal effects is a long-term effect of digoxin. There is increased central vagal tone. This produces reduced heart rate and reduced myocardial oxygen demand. There is increased cardiac sensitivity to vagal stimulation, increased local myocardial concentrations of acetylcholine. This reduces conduction and increases refractory period in the AV node and bundle of His. These effects may be partly antagonized by atropine. Digoxin produces reduced neuronal catecholamine reuptake and increased central sympathetic drive. This produces increased local catecholamine concentrations and positive inotropic action. Examples of indications for digoxin includes rate control and treatment of AF and atrial flutter and treatment of heart failure. Adenosine works by A1 and A2A receptor agonism. Cardiac effects include suppression of SA and AV node conduction, reduced automaticity, reduced oxygen consumption, vasodilation and increased coronary blood flow. Adenosine lacks negative inotropism. Examples of indications Adenosine is the drug of choice for treatment of AV nodal re-entrant tachycardia, which accounts for 50-60% to 60% of cases of paroxysmal SVT. Adenosine is also used to diagnose tachyarrhythmias by slowing atrial ventricular conduction and in diagnosis of coronary artery disease. Magnesium sulfate Magnesium sulfate is a natural calcium antagonist. This non-competitive inhibition mediates many of magnesium's effects. Increased extracellular magnesium results in increased intracellular magnesium. This inhibits calcium influx through voltage-dependent calcium channels. Magnesium competes with calcium for binding sites on sarcoplasmic reticulum. This inhibits calcium release. There is also non-competitive inhibition of phospholipase C-mediated calcium release. Magnesium is also a physiological NMDA receptor antagonist. Magnesium inhibits presynaptic release of acetylcholine, sodium-potassium pumps, resulting in reduced potassium entry and suppression of ventricular after depolarizations and post-junctional potentials. Magnesium has anti-adrenergic actions. Magnesium causes reduced catecholamine release and reduced release of adrenergic hormones at all synaptic junctions. Cardiovascular effects. Magnesium antagonizes atrial L and T-type calcium channels. This prolongs both atrial refractory period and conduction. The reduction in cardiac conduction is opposed partly by vagolytic action of magnesium. Magnesium inhibits potassium entry and suppresses ventricular after depolarization. Sympathetic block and inhibition of catecholamine release results in negative inotropy and chronotropy. Reduction in vascular tone occurs via peripheral vasodilation. This is mediated at least partly by endothelial nitric oxide pathway. Magnesium is used in the treatment of ventricular tachycardias, torset the points associated with a long QT interval. This is a type of ventricular tachycardia occasionally induced by class 1A or class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs which prolong the QT interval. Magnesium is also used to treat arrhythmias induced by adrenaline, digoxin, pupivacaine, and hypokalemia. Magnesium is used to treat multifocal atrial tachycardia and prolonged QTC associated with hypomagnesemia. Atropine Atropine is a competitive antagonist at muscarinic acetylcholine receptors. Cardiac effects Tachycardia occurs at high doses via blockade of the M2 receptors on the sinoatrial node. However, at low doses, bradycardia may occur via blockade of the M1 receptors on the inhibitory prejunctional 
or presynaptic neurons, which permits increased acetylcholine release. This may also be due to central vagal stimulation. Atropine is used in bradycardia treatment and treatment of cholinergic crisis, etc. Adrenaline is an alpha and beta agonist. It produces positive chronotropy and inotropy. Example of indication includes treatment of cardiac arrest. Isoprenaline is a beta agonist. It produces positive chronotropy and inotropy and increased automaticity. Example of indication includes isoprenaline is used intravenously to treat severe bradycardia associated with AV block or beta blockers. Calcium chloride. Calcium acts as a secondary messenger in many cellular processes such as muscle contraction and nerve conduction. It produces positive chronotropy and inotropy. Example of indication includes intravenously to treat arrhythmias associated with hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, hypermagnesemia, and calcium channel blockers. Weaknesses of the Vaughan Williams classification It is based on the assumption that all agents are channel blockers, which in fact some drugs act on receptors. This classification does not account for drugs that have more than one site of action, such as amildaron. The original Vaughan Williams classification included classes 1 to 4 only and was unable to classify compounds such as adenosine and digoxin satisfactorily. The Sicilian Gambit classification is an attempt in 1990 by a European Society of Cardiology Working Group to rationalize the action of drugs according to the ion channels and the receptors on which they act. The classification so far extends to blockers of sodium, calcium, potassium channels, the if current, adrenal receptors, and mascarenic receptors, activators of the adenosine receptor or mascarenic receptors, and suppressors of the sodium potassium pump. Antiarrhythmics can also be classified according to the site of action, such as SA node, adenosine, atropine, digoxin, and calcium channel blockers are used to treat supraventricular arrhythmias. Drugs acting on the AV node, including beta blockers, digoxin, calcium channel blockers, and adenosine, which are used to treat supraventricular arrhythmias. Drugs acting on atria, ventricles, and accessory pathways, such as quinidine, procainamide, disopyramide, and amiodarone, which are used to treat supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias, and dronadarone, which is used to maintain sinus rhythm after successful cardioversion for AF. Drugs acting on ventricles only, lidocaine, maxillitine, and phenytoin, which are used to treat ventricular arrhythmias. Antiarrhythmic drugs can also be classified according to clinical uses. For the treatment of supraventricular tachyarrhythmias, digoxin, adenosine, verapamil, beta blockers, and quinidine. For the treatment of ventricular tachyarrhythmias, lidocaine, maxillitine, and magnesium. For the treatment of both SVT and VT, amiodarone, flaconite, procainamide, disopyramide, propofenone, sotalol, and quinidine. For the treatment of digoxin toxicity, phenytoin. Specific indications. For the treatment of atrial fibrillation, digoxin, beta blockers, verapamil, amiodarone, and dronadarone. For the treatment of paroxysmal AF, amiodarone, propofenone, flaconite, and dronadarone. Drugs used to treat atrial flutter includes digoxin, amiodarone, sotalol, propofenone. Options for treatment of paroxysmal SVT includes adenosine, verapamil, and beta blockers. Drugs used to treat WPW syndrome includes amiodarone, disopyramide, flaconite, and beta blockers. Drugs used to treat ventricular arrhythmias includes amiodarone, lidocaine, disopyramide, flaconite, propofenone, and magnesium for torsade points. Long-term drug therapy has declined in popularity in treating long-term arrhythmias and is now largely confined to patients with atrial fibrillation or as an adjunct in patients with ICDs or benign arrhythmias resistant to catheter ablation. These are my references. Thank you.